Good afternoon, everybody. It is the next day since you guys saw me in the last episode. And we're going to try to take advantage of some of the recent moisture this area has had in Herpa region that we don't get to herp very often. That is an elk. An abundance of elk. Oh, well, here's a random first herp of the night. I was walking along and noticed this guy hopping. This is a Chihuahuan green toad, a really cool little species of toad that actually has a pretty big range in the, uh, the Chihuahuan desert and the Great Plains. They go all the way up into Colorado, but really cool frogs. Look at all these uh, termites that are flying around right now. I can't help but think that he's probably out here gorging himself on the abundance of prey. Really, really cool little toads. I'm glad we got to see one. Normally, you see them on rainy nights pretty often. This is so weird. There's so many wings of these termites on the ground. Yeah. But either way, really cool find to start out the night. A nice green toad. I'm just gonna let him keep on hopping. And our next find, pretty quickly after the first, is a nice little Texas banded gecko who is missing his tail. We did not do that. He was just like that. <laughs> He's having a kind of hard time climbing here, but really cool. That's not something I was expecting to see here, so kind of interesting. Normally where these guys are at, they're fairly common, so hopefully we'll see a couple of them tonight. Good looking Texas banded gecko is our next find. You can see his tail is actually pretty recently broken. Hasn't started regrowing yet at all. Well, our next herp of the night is another weird one and another new species for the year. This is a cliff chirping frog, a really interesting group of frogs that is mostly uh, Central American. Really widespread genus, and I think this is probably the most widespread representative in the U.S., other than maybe the in Rio Grande chirping frog, which is invasive in a lot of areas. But these guys spend a lot of their time calling from cracks and rocks and to be honest, it's pretty uncommon to just see them out hopping around like this. Really interesting. But we are still looking for our first snake of the night, so I'm going to make it quick with this guy, and we're going to keep on moving. Another random amphibian. This is a couch's spadefoot toad. These guys are super common in West Texas, particularly anytime it rains. You'll see them by the dozens crossing roads. But this guy's just sitting here eating these weird flying termites that are absolutely everywhere right now. And I'm assuming that's what all these other uh, various small insect eating herps are doing out tonight. Because, I mean, they're everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. Flying into our faces. And it's a perfect food source for things like frogs and banded geckos. So I'm assuming all that activity is inspired by the abundance of prey tonight. Which is pretty cool to see. Well, we got a snake, but I'm still not entirely sure it isn't something that's just sitting out here gorging itself on these termites. This is another little blind snake. These guys actually do eat largely little invertebrates like larval ants and termites. So it's definitely possible that's what he's doing out too. Really cool. This thing is microscopic, so I'm assuming this is a Texas blind snake. They get quite a bit bigger than that, so this is a juvenile, but it's still really cool to just see one out and about like this, hanging out on the road. I would not be at all surprised if he is out looking for these nice soft-bodied termites, but he is surrounded by a bunch of ants, which definitely are not as pleasant to eat. See, that one's attacking him, so I'm going to move him out of the road so he doesn't get run over or chewed up by these ants. But first snake of the night, a nice little Texas blind snake. All right, guys, well, our next find is a really cool one. We're out here shining around in Steven spots. That, that is about as far west as you can find a rough green snake in the United States. Really, really cool. Now these snakes are pretty common in West Texas, but definitely not very common this far west in Texas. We see a lot of them in the Eastern Trans-Pecos. But we are like 30 minutes from Alpine right now. And that's a rough green snake. Really, really cool to see. But we're just going to get some quick shots of this guy and leave him to his business. 
they're not super rare here, but they are a good find, I would say. There's plenty of places in uh, West Texas where they are quite common, but I would say this is not one of those. This is one of the, the more uncommon places to see one of these awesome snakes, so. All right, we're gonna leave that guy to it and see what else we can turn up. But beautiful rough green snake as our next snake of the night here in West Texas. In the heart of Texas is Chihuahuan Desert, and here is a snake that I can find in Georgia. <laughs> really, really weird. All right, guys, here's our next find of the night. A nice black tail rattlesnake just hanging out on top of this boulder, looking like he's about to do a little bit of bush climbing. A really good looking snake. Seems like stuff is out in at least decent numbers. This is the first, I guess, nocturnally active snake we've seen at this spot, so it's not the best indicator of movement, but it is definitely, oh, he got scared by a moth. It's definitely movement though, so we'll take it. But we're probably gonna hang out here for a little bit longer and then might end up moving to a different area if we don't see much else, but nice black tail here stretched out on top of this boulder. There's a nice little glossy snake. Look at that. It's the first one of these we've seen in West Texas this year. Really nice looking. Love glossy snakes, especially the big ones. This guy's medium sized, maybe two years old or so. They get quite a bit bigger than that out here though. As you can see they got a really nice little pointy nose and kind of superficially resemble a Lampropeltis, although they're in their own genus, Arizona. They also look a lot like Emery's rats in their pattern, but their heads are completely different. So if you're able to get them in hand, it's pretty easy to tell them apart. They got a much pointier little nose and a less distinguished head, but really nice. These guys are super common in the grasslands though. Nice little glossy as our next find. We're gonna move this guy off the road and keep heading to our next cut. Goodness gracious. <laughs> that is an impressive Texas toad. Look at that thing. He is huge. These guys are also kind of ubiquitous in this area, especially on the right nights. So uh, we're just gonna move his Titanic self out of the road and keep on moving, but that is a really big toad. <laughs> Whoa! Look at that! Yeah! We were just talking about how they get a lot bigger, and there you have Steven next to <laughs> a very large glossy snake. Oh, buddy. Sick! These things are so cool when they get that big. Look at this. And they're super gentle, too. I don't think I've ever been bit by one. Really cool. You can see he's probably three feet and change. And it's not, not terribly uncommon to see four footers. Look at that pointy little head. So cool. It seems like snakes are moving pretty well tonight, so we're just gonna let this guy keep cruising too, and we're gonna do the same. And well, that is a nice big glossy snake to show what I meant when I was saying they get a lot bigger than that one we saw earlier. Just gonna let him keep crawling off onto the shoulder and we're gonna hit the road. Well, here's a little night snake, our first one of the night, but as you guys know by this point, these are probably the single most common snake out here, at least when the Aatrox aren't moving, so we're not gonna mess with him too much. And another one. We've hit a couple cuts since uh, the last night snake, but haven't seen anything. Right there is our next snake of the night, a beautiful Trans-Pecos Copperhead. Super dark. Let's go get a better look at him. All right, I'm gonna try to navigate this slope without falling down and stabbing myself. He sure is. Look at that. Wow. It's so healthy. Oh my goodness. Are you gravid? 
That's what I was thinking. <laughs> I'm gonna fall. Oh, that's there. awesome. Look at this snake. That is so awesome. Look at that. Super healthy. Really cool pattern. And big, too. I mean, that's probably one of the biggest Trans Pecos copperheads. Oh. All right. We put this girl under a hat for a few minutes and let her calm down so we can get a better look at her. But that is such a fantastic snake. Likely gravid, so we're going to minimize our time with her. Because she's just so fat, that's, there's no way she's not gravid with how thick she is. So we're just going to leave her to her business. I take a couple quick photos. But that is a great way to highlight the night if we don't see anything else. That is a fantastic snake. We were just talking about how much Trans Pecos copperheads add to the herping experience out here. Because they're just so variable and so cool, so photogenic. Just a really great addition to the diversity in this region. So... All right, we're gonna leave this girl to her business. Here's an idea of the habitat, just like mesquite trees and rock piles. All right, guys, well, it has been a fat minute since we've seen anything. We haven't seen any snakes since, I guess, the copperhead was probably the last thing I showed you guys. I did see one of the blacktails we saw in the last episode again, but didn't want to mess with him. But we're probably going to end up calling it a night here pretty soon. We've got a long drive back to town, so if we see anything on the road, of course we'll stop. But if not, I might end up seeing you guys tomorrow. All right, everyone, it is the next day. Um, actually, it's not the next day. It's been two days because we didn't see anything yesterday for the most part. And I ended up scrapping that footage because it just wasn't very exciting. Not much happened. And uh, we mostly only saw stuff that we've seen plenty of so far this trip, so... We're back at it again tonight, hoping for better results. We're hitting an area we have not done yet this year and an area that has been one of my favorites in the past. So we'll see how it treats us tonight. We're gonna get to shining and I will update you guys when we find our first herp. It is a beautiful evening today. Hopefully it's good enough for the snakes. We're gonna find out. Steven's got a black tail. It does look like a lep, that's cool. Wow, he's nice. Super light. Pretty little guy, yeah. very tiny too. Hello, dude. So obviously the road is no place for this little guy, so we're gonna move him to safety and we'll get a better look at him. But really nice. First snake of the night, a nice black tail in the road while we're walking the cut. That's a really cool looking little black tail. Super cute. Steven saw another one, but apparently it was on the very top of the cut where we're not going to be able to get to it. But first snake of the night. Hopefully there's more to come, but it's been pretty slow so far. Well, we haven't seen any more snakes, but we've been seeing plenty of these guys as usual. Little red spotted toad, one of the most common herps we see pretty much everywhere out here. They're very omnipresent whenever it rains, and it has been raining quite a bit lately. So naturally they're kind of all over the place. All right, guys, so I just found something really cool and unexpected. I flipped over that little thing right there, and underneath it was this guy or girl. This is an eastern collared lizard and a really cool looking one. These things have a pretty gnarly bite. Ow! Goodness gracious, these things hurt. They are so strong. They actually eat a lot of other lizards, which is cool. But man, what? look at the colors on that thing. That is fantastic. Super cool. Are you ever going to let go of me, brother? No? All right. <laughs> well, I guess I'm going to sit here until this thing lets go of me. You can hear the coyotes in the background, hopefully. But that is a female eastern collared lizard with alternate colors on her. Really beautiful. And I actually don't see too many collared lizards in West Texas. There's definitely some spots where they're pretty common. But they're usually just a happy surprise out here. Um, for the most part, but really good looking lizard. So one of the cool things about collared lizards is they are super defensive and they will sit there with their mouth open and actually will come after you and try to bite you if you back them into a corner like this lady is. But we don't want to stress her out too much. She's already bitten the absolute shit out of me multiple times. So I'm going to go put her back under a piece of trash and we're going to keep shining. gently walked under there <laughs> so cool well apparently this spot is just where it's at tonight because right past the collared lizard there's an atrox quilled up 
in ambush right there. I'm gonna get a quick photo of him and then we'll try to get a closer look. What's up, dude? <laughs> as common as Aatrox are out here, it's not very often we get to see him just coiled up like that. And unfortunately, he did get grumpy a lot faster than I was hoping he would. But I did get a couple cool pictures of him sitting there nice and relaxed. He's got a pretty good hunting spot here along this cut, so I don't want to disturb him and scare him off, but that is really cool. But this is only our second western diamondback of the trip. Normally, these are one of the most common snakes out here. And for whatever reason, this year, we've only seen two. Really good-looking, light gray individual. And not something I was expecting to see here at all. Really cool. All right, here's a pretty interesting find. This is a big bin scorpion. And, uh... One of the interesting things about these guys is they are really, really big. At least for West Texas. Biggest scorpion we get out here. Not quite as big as the desert hairy scorpions out in Arizona. Get him. Get it. <laughs> get it. He got it. <laughs> oh, that was cool. Holy crap. <laughs> Go to town, dude. All right, guys, so I was opening the gate at Steven's house, and we just got back, and I spotted this guy in his driveway. This is a really nice-looking couch of spade foot. I think this might only be the, the second one I've showed this year, and I think they were both in this episode, but this is an adult. The one we saw earlier in this episode was a juvenile. These guys have really cool green coloration on them, and they're pretty variable, too. You'll get some that are just neon green, and then others that are kind of an olive hint like this guy, but... Just like the spade foots back home, they have a spade on their foot. I'm going to see if I can grab this guy and show him to you. But a really cool looking frog nonetheless to end our night. So I'm just going to let this guy keep on with his business. And I'm probably going to wrap up this episode here. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all next time.